Oh my gosh, I actually just realized I don't have gloss on. Woo, Lena! Woo! everybody welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video welcome back to another advice with cat really really excited to have you guys here we're gonna chat we're gonna have a good time I'm going to take off my glasses because I can see that there's a, a blue lens reflection so I'll take them off but uh, thank you so much for being part of the JK fam thank you so much if you haven't subscribed please do as you know I always do from time to time an advice with cat and in this video I just sent out a sort of like a post on Instagram and I ask you guys if there's anything you'd like advice on let's talk about it whether it can be let me just take these off chair nope um, whether it can be um, life love family friends career relationships whatever it may be that you might want my advice on I ask you guys to put whatever your scenario question story whatever is and then I respond to them in this video now I always do make a disclaimer of which I feel like I don't need to but in some instances uh, dependent on what the question is I always have to make a disclaimer to say I'm not a professional psychologist or not a professional I'm not gonna diagnose anybody with anything I am just going to be giving my advice as a friend to a friend okay that's pretty much how it goes in this video so thank you so much for being here thank you so much for subscribing if you haven't subscribed please do also do follow me on Instagram and all my social media platforms because that helps me out as well quite a lot if you are not a member on my channel yet please do become a member I release a video every single week which is a bonus video for members and members get to see three videos a week as opposed to just two for everybody else so um if you can definitely do become a member there's already a few videos on the membership space uh where i talk about quite a lot of things sensitive ones fun things blah 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 and that kind of thing so let's not waste any time i've got my peppermint tea here because i am going to read out some things that you need advice on um so let's get into the video um instagram posts from you guys I'm gonna go in no particular order um, some things I might answer some things I might not dependent on have I actually spoken about it on the channel before and if I have I will recommend you to the videos that will help you with regards to that specifically let's get into it okay this one just says so I've been single for about three years now and my friends are in serious relationships that's it so I don't know what you're asking here I I I always say that if it's too long for that little question box, do DM me because then I take screenshots and then I read from the DMs in my screenshots. So please do, if you feel like it's too long, just send me a DM and then I can screenshot it for you, okay? How do you deal with loneliness even when you have people who love you around? I feel like loneliness is a part and parcel of life. It's a part and parcel of who we are. At some point, you go through a phase of loneliness. It doesn't necessarily mean that something bad is happening or something, you know, you, you're just uh, drifting from other people or whatever. You can be surrounded with so much love and so much support and so much, um, you know, family, friends, but still feel lonely. And that's normal. It's a normal part of life. It's how long you decide to dwell in that loneliness for that might be a prerequisite of something more serious. So if you are lonely and you've been lonely for a really long time and you can't quite pinpoint why you're lonely, like, you know, some people will be lonely because they haven't been in a relationship in a really long time and, you know, they miss having a partner around. Some people are lonely because they've just lost a loved one that they cared a lot about and had a close relationship with. Some people are lonely because you know they don't have um, a good friend they don't have a solid friendship um, that they would you know they want to have it but they feel lonely because of it so there's many reasons why people go through spouts of loneliness and I feel like maybe it would be helpful to do an in-depth check with yourself 
maybe write down some things, journal some things, figure kind of out what, figure kind of out, wow, it's logo, figure out what it is that might be the root cause of how you're feeling. And a lot of the time, it just takes moments of reflection where you're thinking about it, where you write things down. Also talk to um, family members or your support system, your friends, whoever it may be, to say, look, I'm, oh my gosh, I actually just realized I don't have gloss on. Woo, Lena, woo. So uh, basically all I can just say is just maybe speak to people that you care about, your support system. They might also give you some sort of indication or as to why, because they know you and uh, they know you really, really well. But if you can't kind of pinpoint what it is and you've been feeling like this for a really long time, I do suggest you speak to someone and talk to a therapist or a counselor or someone who might be able to advise you more on why you're feeling how you're feeling or maybe there's a deeper rooted cause to it. Um, hi, Auscat. Please advise on how to live, cope and move on after losing a mother. I feel suicidal. Sure. It's been a year and a few months without her and I can't cope. I'm on antidepressants. Now, Losing a mother is very painful. As somebody who has lost a mother, I know exactly what you are going through. I don't, for me, it never got to a point where it became suicidal. Um, but I know that it's one of the worst things any human being can experience, especially if you've had a close relationship with your mother or um, a mother figure to you that you can experience losing a mother or a mother figure. So what I do suggest is because you said that you're feeling suicidal, I highly recommend that you consult someone that you can speak to. You speak to a psychologist, a counselor, or what have you, because you might need a little bit of extra help going through the grieving process. It takes a really long time to deal with or um, grapple with the loss of a mother. I've lost a lot of people in my life family members, friends, all of that. I've lost a lot, I've grieved a lot, but I have never felt the pain that comes with losing a mother. And I really do highly suggest because my sister and I went through therapy after we lost our mom. So I really do highly suggest that you do consult a psychologist, a uh, counselor. I believe you're on antidepressants, which basically also means that you've consulted doctors, psychiatrists, that have disposed the antidepressants to you or diet or not disposed that um gave out a script for the antidepressants to you so you do have access to seeing doctors and psychologists and what have you i do recommend you highly speak to someone also you surround yourself with people who are close to your mother people who are close so a, fa a father figure a husband friends of your mom it's always so nice to talk to people who have memories of your mother um more especially memories of your mother you know, when you were young, things about your mother that you didn't know. It's amazing how you will learn so much about your mother, but it'll be nostalgic. It, it'll bring a very warm and light energy to your thoughts about your mother. I know I was having a conversation with my sister yesterday and the lady Emma Fashel, <laughs> I was having a conversation with her yesterday and she was just like, you know, brother, there's, there's things I didn't know about mama and this and this. And I was like, Let's sit down, let's talk about it. And I told her things that she wouldn't have known about our mom because our, she was young when our mom passed. So I really feel like consulting someone, speaking to someone, really, really important. And um, dating men with kids. <laughs> okay, so this one says dating men with kids. You are, uh, uh. that's basically what this girl said. Firstly, I would love to know how old are you if you're dating a man with children. If you are 23, 24, I highly don't suggest you date men with kids purely because you are young. You must date young people, young people who don't also have a children or a child. I feel like um, when you get older, it gets a lot harder because then you meet people who do have children. A lot of the people in my age bracket or older that I would typically date have kids. They either have one kid, two kids, three kids, four, five, ten, soccer team, chat, 
okay and you can't get around it yes you can be like oh okay no i still refuse me i don't want a man with kids whatever sure okay but you are drastically narrowing down the pool of men that you can potentially meet you know so i would love to know first how old are you that you are dating men with kids or you can't date men with kids or you want my opinion on men with kids if you are below me if you're below 25 26 7 i really think you should just give your chance yourself the chance and the opportunity to date a man without children but once you get to your late 20s early 30s and what have you the the pool narrows down so much so that it's highly unlikely that you'll find a man without kids especially when you're dating so if you do find yourself in this pool and you're older and you feel like ooh, men with kids you are uh, it's okay it might it, it might not be your thing and that's okay you're granted that if you have children when but you don't want to date a man with kids i'll be like i bo which one is this one because you can't be hypocritical you can't you if you have kids dating someone with kids whether a man woman whatever should it's, it's a norm like i've got friends with kids who want to date men with kids because then when you're dating someone who has kids when you have kids as well there's an understanding of what comes with children right if you do not have children and maybe you're in your late 20s early 30s and you're like oh my god uh, men with kids whatever it is hard i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you chap it's really hard to date a man with kids however it's all about the gent okay it's all about the gent you need to kind of suss out what kind of relationship does this person have with his children and what kind of relationship does this person have with the mother of his child or children because that will be the one thing that separates a good healthy relationship with a man with kids to a toxic one with a man with kids but who has a really toxic relationship with the mother of his kids the mother of his kids doesn't have any boundaries that so on and so forth so if you do like someone and he's got children i think it's a matter of having the conversation with him to try and find out what kind of relationship do you have with the mother of your kids what kind of relationship do you have with your children how often do you see your children does he want to introduce his kids to you as yet maybe not maybe you are not ready to meet his kids then you mention things like that these are really important conversations to have especially with somebody with children because you need to understand what kind of person you're dealing with if that guy has a very set boundary with the mother of his kids wuti yazin me and you we are no longer together but we have kids and i will take care of my children and the mother of his kid is very respectful of that doesn't call him at all odd hours of the night doesn't just randomly say yo umtana ya kula you need to come whatever whatever meanwhile umtana just hurt themselves they fell off the bike and about right yeah understand so you need to and uh, you need to grapple with finding out what kind of relationship he has with the mother of his kids and what kind of relationship he has with his children as well but there really isn't anything wrong with dating men with children i have quite i mean <laughs> for the latter part of my 20s i've been dating men with kids okay i'm just with someone now who doesn't have kids and it's a relief i'm not gonna lie to you it's a relief but is nothing bad about it everybody deserves to be loved even men with children even women with children everybody deserves a shot at love don't you think men that have times it's the same girl who says men that have times of prioritizing work over their relationships and ignoring you let me tell you something a man can be busy one good this man can be richard branson okay this man can be a president a ceo a coo a cfo this man can be bona the busiest but it's not a lie when they say you are never too busy for someone you love or someone you care about or someone who matters to you or things that matter to you you can never be too busy i'm with somebody who's busy very busy with work but he prioritizes seeing me because we we gotta make this work right we gotta make this work so somebody who never has time because they're busy is because they don't want to make time that is it
It's because they don't want to make time. We can be busy throughout the day. One person knocks off at 6, the other person knocks off at 8. Okay, then let's meet somewhere for a late dinner. Or come through to my house, I'll cook you dinner. Or you come to... You make a point of seeing each other because you want to. You want to. That person means that much to you that you prioritize seeing them and spending time with them. So the business of somebody who's too busy, uh, me, I do not subscribe to that line of thinking. I do not subscri subscribe to that thought process at all. And somebody who ignores you, let me tell you, this is not high school. One good, one good. One thing I can tell you, a man who loves you, a woman who loves you, shouldn't be ignoring you. Why are they ignoring you? Even when they are mad at you and you guys had a fight, and they really don't feel like talking to you. Then you communicate the fact that, listen, you know we've just had something, we just went through something, I really need a moment, whatever. They're not ignoring you. They told you, and then they will come back to you when they are ready. Provided they don't take a week. Because then a week is, I mean, are you crazy? If you're taking the, the rest of the day where you just want to focus on whatever else and not think about your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever, that's fine. But somebody who ignores you, this is not high school. This is not high school. Yes, in high school, we used to ignore, hi, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to talk to him. I want him to see that I'm angry. And then you deliberately ignore them. What's, what purpose is it going to serve? If this is somebody that you love and somebody that you care about, what purpose is it going to serve you to ignore them? It's childish. There really isn't a need or a reason to be ignoring somebody you love. Really. I hope that answers your question. How, I like this one. How do you split bills amongst friends when going out? Is it something that is discussed prior or not? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I go out with my friends quite a bit. Okay? We go out. We, just this past weekend, we went to Proud Mary for dinner and we were celebrating my birthday because I'm celebrating my birthday the whole month, okay? I'm not just celebrating it on the 7th of June, I'm celebrating the whole month. So we went out to dinner and we went to Proud Mary, which is quite a pricey restaurant, right? So we got there, got to Proud, Proud Mary, had drinks, um... Um, had great meals, um, had starters. I remember we had a charcuterie board as a start and all of that. What we basically do, it really is this simple. What we basically do is the bill will come. If there's four of us, we divide it by four. So if the bill is 2,000 rand, we divide it by four and everybody pays their portion of the bill. What happens that might challenge this a little bit is in my group of friends, Two of my friends are not really big drinkers. And then there's two of us who are... <laughs> See ya, poozer. We drink. So what we will do is sometimes if uh, me and the other friend of mine who drinks, we get there and we're like, okay, we want a bottle of wine or what have you. And the bottle of wine is like 600 bucks or something like that. We will ask that that bottle of wine be charged separately to the main bill because then we know that that 600 is quite a chunk of it would be quite a chunk of the main bill because you know so rather than have it be part of the main bill we separate anything that is alcoholic that costs an arm and a leg to be separately paid for and then either she will pay for it or I will pay for it and then we'll split the rest of the main bill four ways or three ways or whatever. So a lot of the time we don't want our friends who do not drink alcohol to feel like why am I covering the cost of, you know, you had four gins which were doubles which each cost about a hundred bucks. 400 rand that's already all on you whereas i don't drink i had two cocktails and i had one meal all together it's 400 rand your bill is like 800 rand or 700 rand you know so what we do is we split it four ways and then if we're having alcohol or we're having a big bottle of an expensive bottle of wine or something me and my other friend then we will not include that that's it we don't discuss it prior there isn't a discussion with you your guys mina they say whatever there isn't. We just know that's what it is. We split it four ways. That's it. We don't sit there calculating. No, my my cocktail was 47 rand 50 and then plus my dinner, which was 285 and then plus this. 
bra, bra. We don't calculate it down to the T. We don't have time for that. We just split it four ways, split it three ways, dependent on who is there. And then we keep it moving. Um, with a mental breakdown and how to deal with it. Honestly, I speak about mental breakdown so much on my channel. I speak about mental health. There are multiple, probably videos, not probably, multiple videos and vlogs where I talk about what I would do when I'm going through a phase of a mental breakdown. What I do in terms of shutting down, digital detoxes, sleeping, what my um, 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 at home remedies are for when I'm, remedies are for when I'm dealing with a mental breakdown, switching off and all of that. I've got so many videos on that. Please do check on my channel, especially videos, sit down videos where I'm talking about mental health. I typically address that in those videos. So please do check that out. My boyfriend is a good loving guy. I just can't help. Okay. My boyfriend is a good, loving guy. I just can't help but cheat on him. There is no reason. Send help. Uh, maybe you're just not a monogamous person. Let's be honest. Um, a lot of people are not monogamous. And you can have a lot of um, members of our society that will sit here and talk to you about monogamy not being a thing. And, you know, you just can't love one person and whatever. And it's innate in our human nature to, you know, want to try out other things, different things, different people. Maybe you're just not monogamous. Maybe you just don't love your boyfriend the way you think you do. Because maybe you feel like you have been monogamous in your previous relationships, but why can't I be monogamous in this one? Maybe something in the relationship is not hitting for you. You know, maybe something is just not, you know, you feel like something is lacking that pushes you to go out sometimes and go run the streets. <laughs> Uh, do your business on the streets. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you're just not monogamous. That's also okay. There's a lot of people who are not monogamous. There are a lot of people who have open relationships, open marriages and all of that because monogamy is just not a thing for them. That's fine. But maybe you just need to do a little bit of internal work to kind of figure out why is it that you keep cheating on him uh, because it really isn't fair to someone who isn't cheating on you or who believes that you guys are in a monogamous relationship and you're not cheating on each other. It really isn't fair to do that to him. So I do suggest that you just take some time, have a little one-on-one -on -one chat with yourself and figure out why you're doing what you're doing. Is it because you're not monogamous? Is it because you really don't think you love him the way you thought you did? Is it because he hurt you before and now you can't be monogamous anymore with him and you cheat and whatever? There could be many reasons and I feel like you just need to take time and think about it for yourself and then figure it out that way. Unfortunately, I can't help you there. Uh, hi, Kat. I've just recently moved to Hey Girl. I've just recently moved to a new city and I'm wondering uh, what the best way or place to meet new people are or is. Um, you know what? This one, it's, a, it's, it's, I hate to say it, but it's as simple as what I'm about to say, but I know how hard that can be as well. Meeting new people, you just need to go out more. If you're in a new city and if it's a big city and it's got so many activities and things that you can do. Go to museums, go to bars, go to uh, libraries, go to just places where you would feel comfortable, where there's a large portion or group of people where you can meet people, do that. Um, join groups, you know, like there's Facebook groups of people who live in certain cities and meeting new people. Um, also do things like speed dating, if you're open to dating, if you're not in a relationship. Um, if you are in a relationship, maybe just, um, I don't know, man, joining groups. You can't be online dating if you're in a relationship, but getting yourself out there a lot more. Take yourself out to lunches. Take yourself out to brunches. Be friendly. Smile at people. Don't go out a lot, but then have a mean mug on your face. It's not going to help your case. It really isn't. Um, you know, just... Just maybe just take the initiative of if you see like a, a, a lady 
if you're you're a lady i think if you see a lady chilling somewhere having a cup of coffee you get a cup of coffee hi can i sit here have a conversation blah 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 if they say no okay you're not losing anything from it um but if they say yes and then yeah have a conversation hi my name is so on i'm new to the city can you recommend a couple of uh places where i can go do art classes do french classes excuse me do french classes learning new language whatever whatever it's great. Do sip and drinks and all of that where you can meet people, paint and have a glass of wine while you're doing it. It's fantastic. So that's all you need to do. You just kind of need to um, uh, 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 put yourself out there by going out a lot more when you're in a new city. That's pretty much it, bro. Mm -hmm. How to heal a broken heart. I've recently done a video where I spoke about heartbreak and how to move forward from it. So please do check my videos. I have done one um, recently, probably within the last two, three months, I've done one. Um, I went through his phone. <laughs> I went through his phone and I found what I was looking for. Do I confront him or do I keep quiet? Why go through a person's phone? Hey, in a chance, and I don't know why y'all do this. Hey, catch me outside. I am not going to do that. You can catch me outside going through someone's phone. And I feel like it's the best thing to, it, 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 you're still individuals at the end of the day, even though there is a we and we're in a relationship now, but people are entitled to their privacy. You cannot, why are you going through the phone? What are you looking for? And did you go through the phone because you have noticed that, okay, recently he's been a little bit shady. He's been whatever. Or were you just going through the phone because you're a snoop and you like to know people's endeavors and whatever. So now you found what you're looking for. If there's one thing that my mama always told me is that you do not go through someone's phone unless you are expecting to find what you will be looking for because a lot of the time you will find it and let me tell you something it could be something as innocent as hey thank you so much for helping me out the other day really appreciate it whatever whatever simple message from another female thank you so much for helping me out the other day now you're wondering hey man, helping you out with what who is this for what is this happening who is this person who's who my man is helping out whatever meanwhile they could have been helping it's a colleague and they helped them out to the presentation for work. And the colleague was just like, thank you so much for helping me out. Now, because you've gone through the phone, your mind is on overdrive. You're sitting there thinking, yeah, I did da, da, da. If that person hasn't done anything, why did you go through the phone? If your relationship is fine and whatever, why did you go through the phone? Even if the relationship isn't fine, speak to the person rather than go through the phone. So now you found what you are looking for. Now you're wondering, do I keep quiet or do I confront him? Now, this is a very tricky situation to be in because yes, you found what you are looking for. You want to confront him if you do. And then you do confront him. And then the next point of call is going to be, but why were you looking through my phone? What's your answer going to be? Really? Really? Now you've damaged trust with you and that person because yes, maybe you found out what you needed to find out and the stars were aligning with you and, and the universe was the one saying, go through the phone, go through the phone. You found out what you needed to find, find out and whatever. But now you want to confront that person. You must expect that you're going to get, but why were you going through my phone? And this could be a potential deal breaker. This could be a potential, I'm not going to do this, or it's going to damage the relationship going forward in terms of trust and in terms of loyalty. But if you found out what you found out and you really can't talk to the person about it, but know that it's going to swing either way. Then there's the option of just keeping quiet, but then you keep quiet and then you die with it inside. You see, it's like a catch-22 kind of situation. That's why I will never advise someone to go through someone's phone. I could sit with my partner here and he could go to the bathroom or he could be cooking and his phone is right here. His phone is right here to me. Yeah. If that phone rings, I don't even look at it. I don't pick it up to go, hey, here's your phone. I don't, hey, I do not put myself through that stress. I don't. Because I know, Hori, I'm going to see Palesa and then wonder, 
hey, Palisa's calling you. And then after he speaks to Palisa, I'm like, who's Palisa? How do you know Palisa? Then it's a fight. Then it's stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, um, how to initiate splitting of bills during lunches or dinners instead of one person all the time among friends? Firstly, one person all the time among friends shouldn't even be happening. I don't care whether you are more money than your friend is or whether you are in a better financial position than your friend is or whatever. When you are out with friends, always split the bill because there is one friend who's going to end up feeling like, ah, not every time I'm the one paying for, you know, the bill is 2,500. I pay 2,000 most of the time. And then these two split 250, 250. Then the bill was 3,000. I paid 2,000. These two split the 1,500, 500, blah, blah. It's never a good idea to pay more when you're having lunch or dinner with friends or whatever. Always split the bill. Always split the bill. It's good, it's conducive for your friendship, and it provides, it It literally cancels out any fights or disagreements between you and your friends. So honestly, split the bill. How to initiate that conversation? Speak to your friends. It really isn't that deep. Have a WhatsApp group, you probably already have a WhatsApp group. Hi guys, listen, I like, I love the fact that we're going out and we're enjoying our best lives, child, we're living our best lives, we're independent women, we're doing this, 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 but um, can we please maybe start considering splitting the bill three ways or four ways, dependent on however many people are there at the lunch or the dinner in future so that we don't have to uh, have any issues going forward regarding money or people feeling disconcerted at the fact that they spend more than the other person. Simple. Um, long distance relationships. I have been very anti long distance relationships for, a, for all my life. So do I feel like they can work? Yes. Do I feel like the ones that do work, work are the exception to the rule? Yes, I do. I feel like a lot of dis long distance relationships end up fizzling out or you end up falling out of love or cheating happens or whatever because it's hard not to be around the person that you love for six months, for 12 months. Um, it's really, really difficult and it takes a huge strain on the relationship. Should you try and see what happens and pans out? Of course you should. Give it a shot. You love the person and the person lives in PE and here you are in Johannesburg and you know it's a two hour flight or a 13 hour drive or whatever it is and um, you're thinking to yourself, I don't know how this is going to work. Maybe you can figure out a way around it and you could be the exception to the rule. But I just genuinely feel like most of the time with long distance relationships, it's the rule that always seems to win out over the exception because a lot of them don't work out. And I just don't have the best opinions on um, long distance relationships, but I'm not one to say don't give it a shot and try it out. That's all. That's all. This is a sad one, but how do I walk away from a three year relationship where I'm literally dating myself? It is sad, um, but you know, there's a lot of people who are in relationships where they are lonely and they feel alone even though there's somebody in the relationship. Um, at, from what I can tell here, it seems like you're basically saying that this person has checked out of the relationship. And before making any drastic decisions, I would recommend that you speak to your partner if you haven't already. But you speak to your partner and ask them, well, what's going on? Like, I, I don't understand what's going on between the two of us. Is there something that I need to know? Um, I feel like our dynamic has changed. Um, and hopefully if that partner can be honest with you, they'll be honest to say that, yes, it has changed ABC because of this, that, and the other, and then you can work on fixing it. But, um, no one deserves to be in a relationship where they feel alone. And, uh, 99% of the time, no one deserves to be in a relationship where they feel alone. So if you need to talk about it, talk about it and then make a decision from there. But, um, yeah, no, where you, where you feel like you're dating yourself, that's an injustice. That's a huge injustice that you're doing to yourself. So, okay. I'm 22 years old and I met a guy. I didn't know he was 40 years old and we just click, but I'm skeptical about us. I, me dating and age 
differences and all of that while dating, I really don't necessarily have a problem with that. Um, as long as there's maturity there and it's not necessary, you're over tw you 22. So at this point, I'm not going to sit here and say you're 16. Oh my God, it's fine. It doesn't matter. You're 22. You're a grown up. You're an adult. Um, you can manage your relationship as long as there's no grooming or no controlling or whatever. You're skeptical, yes, because of the large age difference between the two of you. But let me tell you, people have age differences of 30 years, 40 years between them and their partners and it works out. So um, I think being skeptical is normal, but I also do feel like Express to your partner how you feel about, you know, the age difference. Does he treat you differently? Does he talk down to you? Does he treat you like a child uh, when you are having arguments or disagreements? These are very important facts and pointers to note um, because then that will make you see or I, okay, I'm, I'm trying to be in a relationship with you because I care about you and all of that, but I ain't trying to have you treat me like I'm a kid. You know what I'm saying? So these are conversations that you'd obviously need to have with your partner um, regarding the age difference, what makes you skeptical. Uh, but if you feel like he's controlling and all of that, that could be due to the fact that you're a lot younger and they feel like they can control you. Um, also something very important to note because that shouldn't be happening. So, but... If there's that difference between the two of you, he's 40, you 22, 18 years, whatever, chair. Whatever, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, as long as it's respectful, it's mature, it's loyal, beneficial, mutual for the both of you. I don't see where the problem is. I really don't. Dating an older guy who was badly heartbroken in the past. I like him a lot. He's smart, independent, soft. However, he's highly sensitive. When we have small arguments, small, small arguments, he stonewalls me. I realize that he doesn't deal with conflict well. Even went to his place to try and speak to him and he didn't open the gate or answer his phone. Yeah. Okay. I'm an empath. I am too, girl. Feeling sorry for him and what he dealt with in the past. His girlfriend got married while they were dating. So it's hard uh, for me to leave him, but I've started to mourn losing him. That's dangerous. I feel like once you've gone to a point where you're starting to mourn the loss of a relationship, then you're pretty much on your way out. Mm. But, you're, but you're also saying something about caring about this person. I think mm. speaking to them and actually telling them that, listen... When we go through small arguments and you're going through things, I really want to be able to reach out to you, to support you, to be there for you. But you're going to have to open up and let me in. And if they can't do that and have that conversation sincerely with them, if they can't do that, maybe ask them to start considering taking therapy and speaking to someone because stonewalling somebody or cutting somebody out or being emotionally distant, distant, isn't really going to help the relationship in any way. So you do have to uh, communicate with him and actually tell him that I want to be there to support you, but you keep pushing me away. And I don't know at this point how much, I, how much more of it I can deal with because I'm trying to be there for you, but you're really not seeing my efforts. And at this point, I don't know what more to do. And if they care about you as much as I would love to believe that this gentleman does, then he will work on opening up and making things a little bit better. I know that my partner used to struggle quite a lot. Well, he still does slightly, but is a lot better. Struggled quite a lot with communicating, especially when we were having difficult conversations. But because I need him to communicate, he actively tries to bring himself to the conversation every single time, opening up a lot more, better and better and better. So talk to him see how it that will help if not suggest that maybe he speak to someone about it if he doesn't then tell him what he's going to be losing at the risk of not opening up and com continuously stonewalling you and being emotionally distant um to everybody else i hope this video was helpful thank you so much to everybody who sent in questions for advice with cat or scenario stories as you know always put them in the comment section down below because i also do look here in the comment section down below for the next 
um, question scenarios to respond to when it comes to advice with cat for the next video if you feel like you have something that you want advice on and you're thinking about it now drop me a dm because i always take screenshots i'll take a screenshot and the next time i film an advice with cat i'll pull it up so thank you so much for watching this video i've been talking for a good 45 minutes now i think or maybe an hour uh thank you so much for watching this video do subscribe do become a member uh we have a good time on this here platform thank you so much for your constant support thank you so much for watching the videos i'm looking at my stats and i'm just like which one so thank you really really so much we're getting to 30,000 definitely gonna do a giveaway I'm also thinking of also hosting a little get together with some subscribers uh, but this is obviously going to happen to for people who are in the Johannesburg or Gauteng area who'll be able to make it but I'm thinking a nice luncheon and all of that but more will be discussed at a later stage so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video do like the video let's get all my videos to over a thousand likes because that helps me quite a lot um aside from that i'm gonna go thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next advice with cat until then see you soon ah.